research got out of hand. This is the note I made at the top of my script for this video, and boy is it an understatement. What began as a small lore dive into Tears of the Kingdom turned out to be a complete retelling of Hyrule's history in Japanese mythology. If you spend any time watching my videos, you know that I like to reference Japanese history when explaining Zelda topics. Just as some American directors and novelists base their works on mythology and lore, Japan has their own amazing legends from which to pull inspiration. In a previous video, we saw that the mirror shield is actually a real item in Japan. Well, sort of. The sun goddess Amaterasu owned a sacred mirror that embodies her presence. This mirror could be what inspired Miyamoto's choice to create a mirror shield that reflects sunlight. But today, we're going so much further. I intend to show you all that Link, Zelda, and Ganondorf were based on Japanese deities. But first, a little groundwork. What is this? No, I'm not trying to underestimate your gaming intelligence. I know you thought Triforce, and I bet you know what these three triangles represent. Power, wisdom, and courage. Each triangle is also associated with a specific goddess, Din, Nehru, and Ferore. According to the Great Deku Tree in Ocarina of Time, Din created the Material Realm, Nehru created Law and Order, and Ferore created all life forms. When finished, the goddesses departed for the heavens, but they left behind a small portion of their essence the Triforce. Later in the game, Ganondorf touches this mystical emblem and it breaks into three shards. One shard inhabits each of our three main characters, Zelda, Link, and Ganondorf. Although other games add details, this brief history of Hyrule and the Triforce lays the groundwork for this video. Let's now transition to Japanese mythology. In a Japanese book of myths called the Kojiki, the birth of heaven and earth also began with three gods. These gods created the world and seven generations of deities. Yes, seven like the number of sages. Those deities, or kami, then went on to produce lots more, like a lot more. But the most important of the kami were the three precious children. These were Amaterasu, the sun goddess, Tsukuyomi, the moon god, and Suzano, the storm god. These three deities bear striking similarities to our well-known Triforce wielders. Let's take a closer look at each. Amaterasu rules heaven and represents Japanese nobility. Her name means Shrines of Heaven. She controls order, justice, wisdom, and spirituality. Although many legends have been told about the sun goddess, the most famous is the Heavenly Rock Cave. In this legend, the goddess's youngest brother Suzano envied and resented Amaterasu for her rulership. Seeing his arrogance, their father banished him from heaven. But before going, Suzano visited his sister one last time. Knowing they weren't on good terms, Amaterasu was reasonably suspicious of his visit. To prove he had no malice toward her, he challenged her to an, uh, and, uh, unusual competition. They exchanged each other's most precious items and created gods with them. As you do, I guess? Amaterasu created three goddesses from her brother's sword, and Suzano created five gods from his sister's necklace. Amaterasu claimed she had won the competition because her necklace produced more gods than her brother's sword. Outraged, Suzano ravaged both heaven and earth. He destroyed fields and animals and his sister's personal attendants. Appalled by these events, Amaterasu went into hiding in a cave and sealed the entrance with a heavenly rock. Without the sun goddess, the world fell into darkness. The gods held an emergency meeting to devise a way to lure Amaterasu out of hiding. This is what they came up with. Let's throw a party. A party? Yeah, and um, make lots of food and uh, necklaces. Oh yeah, that's that sounds pretty good. Yeah, I think she'd like some food. And we'll bring chickens and make them sing very loudly. What? And we'll uproot trees and wave them around and around and around. I think you're... And there'll be dancing naked ladies. Agreed. As weird as it sounds, 
it worked. When Amaterasu heard their celebration, she got curious and asked what was happening. The gods told her that they were overjoyed at the arrival of a greater god and presented her with the mirror. When she looked out, they grabbed her and removed her from the cave. And as you might have guessed, this is the very mirror still reverenced in Japan as a symbol of the sun goddess's power and the possible inspiration for the mirror shield. I believe that Princess Zelda is based on Amaterasu. Like the Sun Goddess, Zelda is also associated with nobility, often portrayed as a princess throughout the series. She has also been associated with spirituality and light, harnessing the light spirit's power and wielding light arrows capable of destroying evil. The goddess Hylia, whose divinity indwells Zelda, is also connected to light. Her statues often sit in sunbeams and the Skyward Sword tapestry depicts her in front of a sun. Other sun images appear throughout the games. We see sun switches in Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and Wind Waker. Another variation of this design are sun blocks in Majora's Mask. Link must use the mirror shield to reflect sunlight onto the blocks to make them disappear. With all these connections to light, is it really far-fetched to believe Amaterasu inspired our favorite princess? Tsukuyomi's name directly translates to moon reading. This popular practice of reading poetry and gazing at the moon sounds like a perfect date, honestly. Tsukuyomi is married to Amaterasu. He is considered serene and orderly, but he can also be violent, not afraid to kill to retain order. Although Tsukuyomi still has shrines, he is sometimes considered a negative figure. Mythology tells of a terrible mistake he made during a great feast. The story goes that Ukemochi, the god of food, held a feast and invited Amaterasu, who was unable to attend. In her place, she sent her husband. Tsukuyomi was horrified when he saw the way the food was being prepared, being spit from the god's mouth and uh, other places. It disgusted him so much that he killed the food god right then and there. When Amaterasu heard what her husband had done, she left him on earth and returned to the heavens. This separation between them became known as night and day. Tsukuyomi, the moon, will continue to pursue his wife, the sun, across the heavens for all eternity. I don't get why Amaterasu was so upset about what her husband did anyway. No one messes with my food. I'd like to start with probably my least supportive evidence, but wouldn't you agree that Link and Zelda have some sort of romantic tension going on? Like the sun and moon gods, they are destined to be together, but something is always in their way. They need each other, just as the moon needs the sun to shine. Ah, <sighs> how romantic. Um, <clears throat> anyway, beyond their similar love for light-infused women, Link is also a fighter like Tsukuyomi not afraid to kill during his pursuit of justice. Symbols of moons also appear throughout the games. In Twilight Princess, Wolf Link howls at the moon. Also, before its makeover, the mirror shield had a crescent moon on the front. I absolutely love the genius of this moon symbol reflecting sunlight, since that's what the moon does in real life. But unfortunately, the moon was removed because it resembled a religious symbol. Our greatest connection between Link and the Moon, however, is shown in Majora's Mask, actually on the Moon. If Link collects all the masks, he has the ability to change into the fierce deity, a type of god. I believe this deity is Link's counterpart much like Hylia is Zelda's. And what do we see on the fierce deity's armor? Take a closer look, it's a crescent moon. Suzano is the god of storms and seas. His name means impetuous male, a fitting name for this trickster. As already mentioned, he envied the leadership of his older sister, the sun goddess, and opposed her rule. His acts of betrayal led to his banishment from the heavens. However, he wasn't all bad. Legend says that he saved a woman from an eight-headed dragon. After his good deed, he sought to make amends with his sister, who gave him the position of guardian of the gateway to the underworld. Gee, thanks, sis. An article on Mythopedia states, In later periods, Suzano became more closely associated with ideas of calamity, violence, and death. Many people came to see him as a source of disease and misfortune. Well, doesn't that sound familiar? I 
I'm sure you were spotting the similarities between Susano and Ganondorf as I was going along. Like Susano, Ganondorf desired to reign in Princess Zelda's position. He sought after power, leading him to betray the royal family. Through the games, we witnessed his violent acts against Hyrule and the surrounding kingdoms. Though never mentioned, we also see that his power influences the dead, another connection between him and the Guardian of the Underworld. Even the fact that the article writer mentioned the word calamity blurs the lines between these two evil beings. Based upon what we've talked about today, I believe our characters Zelda, Link, and Ganondorf were based on the three precious children in Japanese mythology. If you're still not entirely convinced, I have one more sizable bit of proof that is sure to make you choke on your lon lon milk. But you'll have to wait for my next video on this topic. Subscribe now and turn on notifications so you don't miss it. Interested in hearing more theories and lore? Check out the videos on screen. Have a great day. See ya!